Let's sew the Ariana dress. Hello sewists, I'm Catherine from Minerva, and today I wanted to take you step by step on how to create the Ariana dress from Stylark. Now we have put together a number of kits so that you can have absolutely everything that you need when you're putting together this dress. So before we get to stitching, let's go over what supplies you're going to need. Now, if you've ordered the kit, here's what comes in the kit. Now, in this kit, we have a number of different fabrics, and I selected this gorgeous Egyptian cotton fabric, which has a wonderful crisp drape to it, but is still very lightweight. And the fact that it's cotton makes it incredibly breathable, which is the reason why I decided to go with this fabric. Next up, in all of our kits, it comes with a paper pattern that is printed for you. Next up, we are going to have some matching buttons. And in this instance, we are going to need 12 buttons to go along the front button placket of the Ariana dress. And of course, we are going to have some matching thread, including some matching colored elastic thread. Now, the vast majority of elastic thread tends to be black and white, well, here at Minerva, we actually have some really fun colors and you can create some really neat style details using this. I got this matching pink thread to go with my version. And of course, we're going to include a new sewing needle that matches the type of fabric that you have selected. So once you've got all of that settled, the next thing to do is to cut out your pattern pieces based on your measurements. Do be sure to check the measurement chart as well as the finished garment measurements so that you know which size to select. So once you have all of that traced out and ready to go, let's get stitching. So let's start with the shearing panel. So with this, we are going to use some elastic thread. So for this, we need to hand wind that bobbin and you're going to put some tension on it. You don't want too much tension and you also don't want it to be too loose. So you're just going to hand wind that bobbin before placing it in the sewing machine. Now I have gone ahead and following the notches on the pattern drawn out with water soluble marker, the lines, which we are going to stitch on for the shearing, set your stitch length to the longest stitch length to get maximum gathers. If you don't want it to be as stretchy or gathered, then maybe do it at about a four. I'm just using a straight stitch here and I am stitching going all the way down the panel. When you get to the end, don't use your automatic cutters just go and snip it. You'll also notice that when I had pulled it off, the fabric seemed to bounce back. And then you know that you have a good tension in your bobbin. If it doesn't bounce back like that, you're not going to get as much of that elasticity in the shearing. And it should look just like this. So once the whole panel is sheared, you're going to have a nice stretchy piece of fabric that looks a little something like this, which we are going to fold in half. So the ends tend to curl in a little bit, but we will fix that in just a moment. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take our elastic that came in the kit and we are going to cut it down. Now cut it down based on the size that you have in the pattern instruction. So it's going to be different for each one, but just go ahead and measure that and then snip that in place. And once we have that, then we're going to attach it to the top of the shearing panel. So you're going to put it on the inside because this is going to be sandwiched between the two. And we're just going to sew a little basting stitch on either end of the shearing panel just on each side right there to hold it in place like so. And then you are going to place the two layers together here. And you're just going to pin going all the way down. I actually like to match up where the shearing lines are because that enables us to really make sure everything is lined up and matched perfectly. So you're going to repeat that on the other side of this panel as well. And then we're just going to stitch down to secure it. 
so it'll look just like so then hover your iron so don't let it touch and using a lot of steam i know it's steaming up the lens here but it really shrinks down that shearing so that you get a good nice elasticity within it and i just like to go over it a couple more times and it looks absolutely wonderful now for the straps so with the straps we are going to fold them in half and I am folding this with wrong sides together because we're going to fold it similar to how you fold a double fold bias binding. And you're going to fold each of the ends into the center here. That way they are both just kissing that center line with a little bit of room in between to allow for the turn of the fold so we can fold it back in on itself. And these give us a really nice narrow strap without having to turn any loops. So stitch those down in place and we have our two straps. Now the pattern also includes a little extra for the strap. Now for the bodice. So with the bodice, we have the lining and the main pieces and you've got a right and a left. Match up the notches on the center front and side front bodice pieces. Just going in and pinning going down because because this is a princess seam, you're gonna have a bit of a curve going in here. So just use as many pins as you feel necessary in order to get this all held in place so you can stitch with an accurate seam allowance going down. And I've got the lining completed right here and this is what it will look like. So before we go and press it, because it is a curve, we are going to clip some notches. I like to clip them at about a half an inch to an inch apart. Then I like to use my pressing ham, love that thing, to go in and press the seams open. This is an important step because we want it to lie nice and flat. And then using your ham, you can really press those curved princess seams nice and flat. So we have those panels done. Next, we are going to do the side back. So we're going to match the side back right sides together along the side seam. And you will notice that they fit together perfectly and we have the panel from the lining and it'll look just like so press that seam open as well next on the front piece of your bodice we are going to attach the straps according to the markings on the pattern make sure your strap is not twisted at all when you are going and just double check the length of the strap to make sure it's not too short or too long before you do this. Then I'm going to sandwich this in between the lining fabric. So I'm just going ahead here and I am pinning the front and then all along the top, make sure you match those princess seams going along as well as the side seam. And when you get to the back, leave the back end open just a little bit because I'll get to that in just a moment. So continue to do that for both sides of the bodice. Just putting those pins in and leaving that one edge slightly open. So you see, I've put a pin in here. I'll be taking that out very shortly here. Then we're gonna grab our sheared panel. So on the panel, you have the edge that is folded and finished. That is going to go towards the top of this panel. And so we are just going to open the panel up just slightly and then place it right sides together with that folded panel towards the top. But make sure that that folded panel is down far enough from the seam allowance so you do not stitch on it. You want it to come right with that folded edges right where the top of your seam ends. So it's down the exact amount of your seam allowance and you need to be very careful when you're stitching it down that you don't catch it when you're going through. And then just continue to pin down that side and we're going to stitch down the side all along the top and down the side again. Once that's done, we're going to clip out the corners so that we can reduce some of that bulk. And then of course, all of these are curves. So we are going to add in a couple of clips for ease of movement and clip out that corner. Then I am just going to turn it right side out and you can see how it perfectly lines up against the bodice here. Now let's attach the other side. So with right sides together, we are going to place that sheared panel in the exact same way that we placed it in when we did the first side. And so just go in here and place that panel in place. 
and I'm just moving some of the elastic out of the way so it's not really bulky. And I've left that seam allowance at the top so that I know I'm not going to catch it and it's going to be perfectly aligned when I stitch that seam allowance going in. So I'm just adding in all of those pins to hold everything nice and secure because we will be stitching going all the way down this panel here. And then I'm gonna start along the panel and go all along down to the center front here. So once that is done, I've clipped those curves as well. And I'm just gonna turn it right side out and just pulling those straps and poking out those corners. And this is what the bodice looks like so far. So the next thing that we need to do is give it a good press, which I have done right here. And you can see that we've got a nice sheared back. Now for the patch pockets. So with this, I've gone ahead and surged or overlocked the edges, and then I'm folding it down at the notch. If you don't have an overlocker, you can zigzag the edge. And then I've stitched right across the top right here to finish the top of the pocket. Then we're going to fold in just the amount that the overlock edge is. And I find it gives a really good pressing guide. So everything is perfectly straight and then do the bottom last to get a nice crisp corner. And now we need to attach that patch pocket. So you're going to match up those notches that are on the front of your skirt and just pin those in place. So you make sure that the pocket is aligned correctly and then go ahead and pin along the edges of that pocket. So it doesn't shift as you are going in and stitching this. And when we go ahead to go and stitch this on, we are actually going to stitch little triangles on the end to better secure the pocket. Here is one that I have already attached right here. So you can see how it looks finished. But let's head to the machine. Start a couple of centimeters down and then go up towards the top of the pocket at a slight angle. Then pivot, go straight across towards the edge and then come down. This finishes our very first triangle at the top of the pocket. Next, we're going to follow the pocket going all the way down along the edge, pivot along the bottom of the pocket, and then pivot once more to go up to the top of the pocket. Now we're back at the top. So this is how we do the finishing corner. We're going to go up to the top, go across the top, and then right across at a diagonal to the end. And don't forget to backstitch. And now you have that perfect little triangle at the top of your pocket to help secure that pocket in place. And now for the skirt. So with the skirt, this is the skirt back because it is cut on the fold. And then we have our skirt front right here with our pocket. And we're going to place that right sides together along the side seam. And it has some notches. So just match up those two notches and place those pins in going all the way down the skirt and it should match up perfectly on either side. That is how you know you've got the right side attached. Stitch and serge that. And then I like to press mine towards the back of the skirt. And if you don't have an overlocker, once again, you can use a zigzag stitch. Next, we are going to do a double fold for the bottom hem. So I like to serge the edge to give me a good pressing line. You don't have to do this. That's an extra step, but I find it is much faster for me to serge that bottom hem and give me that pressing guide than it is for me to measure out along the hemline, especially when there is a slight curve like it, what is in this skirt pattern. So once I've done that, I'm going to fold it up once more. And depending on the length that you want, you could make this second fold just a little bit larger if you wanted it to be slightly shorter. I personally like to have a nice little narrow hem. It's nice and neat. Plus it's easier to stitch when it has that slight curve to it. And then we are just going to stitch along the top. Now we're going to do that front button placket. So we're going to fold it over. So I'm just going to fold this end in. And if you wanted, you could fold this end in a little bit more to reduce the width of the overall button placket. I wanted a larger one, hence the reason I did that. But the most important piece to note is to press it right at those notches, because that is the point that it's going to fit the skirt to the bodice. And the finished button placket on this side looks just like so. I've top stitched that in place. 
And now for the skirt. So I've done two rows of long gathering stitches to gather up the bottom of this skirt. So once that is in place, then we can attach it to the bodice. So I have gone ahead and matched up the side seams right here. I always like to pin the side seams and the center fronts first, as well as the very center point at the center back, and then pull those gathering stitches up to fit that. I find it gives a much more even gathering when you have quartered your dress with the bodice and the skirt and making sure you don't have perhaps more gathers in the back of the dress than you do in the front of the dress. So right here, I'm just pulling on only the bobbin threads to gather up that skirt and then distributing them by hand to a point where it looks nice and pleasing. And then I am placing the pins in there just to secure where those gathering stitches are so they don't come out of place. And so just going in here and continuing going down the entirety of the skirt. Now, that being said, when I got to the shearing panel, what I decided to do here was actually not gather it. Because it is sheared and gathered, I actually just stretched out that shearing from the panel and just completely pinned it, the fabric straight, which still pulls in that gathering along the back because you have the gathering from that elasticated shearing in the back panel. Now you could keep the gathering stitches in there, but I think that it distributed those gathers more pleasingly by doing it this way. And then go ahead and stitch all the way around and then serge. Now, the reason we serge this is because we want to finish those edges. And now for the buttons and the buttonholes. So you will need 12 good size buttons here. And I have these beautiful cream ones that came in my kit. And I am just going to place my buttons on. And so I've already done the buttonholes, but I'm going to stitch these buttons on right here. I like to use my machine to stitch them on, especially when there are 12, it saves a ton of time. You can also use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a button presser foot like I do. It still works the very same. Just make sure you are not going forward and you have that stitch length set to zero if you don't have it pre-programmed. And you can see that I have the buttonholes all completed here and I'm just buttoning up the top of the bodice here and we are all done. The Ariana dress, it is looking absolutely lovely and I cannot wait for the reveal. Let it go, what's the use in holding on? Can we find a way where we could spend some time alone? You know where to find me way to go as long as you love me we'll be singing all night long so take a minute to hold me i want nothing more than your arm and there you have it we're all done the ariana sundress I really enjoyed walking you through how to do some shearing as well as create this lovely button placket for a gorgeous dress that i'm sure you'll get a ton of wear out of now, if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments down below, and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. And if you're new to the Minerva community, why don't you create a free profile? You can share all of your makes, including this lovely dress if you decide to make it as well, and interact with other makers and creatives in the sewing and knitting community, and just share all of your creative makes. Now, if you want to see me, I will link my profile down on Minerva and you can find me at Sheer Stitchery. See you later.